Search Blackout with us on Facebook and Instagram. Back to Blackout with Samantha Scarlett and Eddie Barella. And that was my interview with Guar from the band's Warp Tour. As you know, um, with our this, these interviews, except not the Guar one, but all the other ones, we had to cut them down for the show just to like the paranormal questions. But we're going to be posting, I think Eddie's going to have it up sometime next week. I'll post it on our social media, a episode or like a special podcast. that's just the full Warp Tour interview. So look forward for that coming up. Yeah, subscribe um, at blackoutwithus.com on iTunes. Uh, you can get linked up to the iTunes there or just yeah. search for it on iTunes and subscribe. Okay, yeah. Um, next up, um, we have Yerky from the 69 Eyes coming on. So, yeah. Search Blackout with us on Facebook and Instagram. Back to Blackout with Samantha Scarlett and Eddie Barella. So, we have Yerky69. Um, you might know him from the 69 Eyes, and he also has another band called the 69 Cats. But we have him on today to talk about he has a solo album that just came out a month ago called Helsinki Vampire. Hi, Yerky. Yeah, how's it going? And greetings from Helsinki. I'm here. But strangely, you know, I'm traveling back and forward. So I'm actually coming to the States like in uh, in two days. I'll, I'm going to L.A. and San Francisco uh, like in the end the, for the like for a little vacation in the end of this July. So, you know, I'll be back in a couple of days. So all you Californian vampires out there, watch out. You might <laughs> see me around. What do you do so, when you're on vacation in, in L.A.? Well, um, first of all, I go to Rainbow Bar and Grill. And then I, oh. uh, Good then I leave from Rainbow Bar and Grill and fly back home. That's it. Okay. Fair enough. So is that kind of the lair of the vampires yeah, in Los that, Angeles? Yeah, that's like, yeah, I, I, you know, like they have a nice terrace and sun doesn't shine so much to there. So, you know, it's a safe, <laughs> safe place for a Helsinki vampire to stay at the Hollywood vampires lair. So, you know. And you can order your meat extra rare there as well. Well, I'm vegan, so oh. uh, that's, <laughs> a, that's a slight vampire. problem. But I mean, but, uh, but I mean, I've managed by far. Okay. So you just released your new album a month ago, Helsinki Vampire. Did you record it over in Helsinki or did you come here and record it here in the States? Because you're over here in the United States a lot. Yeah, well, I'm there just to, uh, you know, to um, to have fun and meet my friends and uh, get some creative vibes. Uh, since, you know, like recently I've been playing there with my rockabilly band, the 69 Cats, and that was, that's already a little over a year ago. So uh, I just like to, um, you know, get some inspiration from the States. But coming to this uh, Helsinki Vampire album, uh, it's obviously, of course, recorded completely in Helsinki. And uh, it's it's like a like it's actually like a duet album. Uh, it's it's done by me and and uh, longtime 69 Eyes producer Johnny Lee Michaels, and he plays. Every instrument on the album, uh, he composed all the songs, and and he, all the music is by him. So I'm sort of like a like only, if you say that, only an instrument on that record. But together, we of course created the atmosphere and uh, the the whole concept for that. And and then, you know, I I've been doing music with with Johnny Lee Michaels for uh, for, for a long time, and and like. Pretty, pretty regularly recently, uh, uh, we recorded my vocals for the 69 Cats album, which came out like a couple of years ago, then for the latest 69 Eyes album, and then we did some movie music for, uh, for, for a Russian um, fa- dark fantasy movie. And that kind, that music, we that sounds interesting, right? So th- that music is also that's that dark Russian, uh, Russian uh, dark fantasy mu- uh, movie music. That's the three last songs on on this album. They are sort of bonus tracks for oh, cool. for Helsinki Vampire album. So so there you go. So I've been recording with him like a pretty regularly. So we just and we're very. Um, we we have nice flow going on and you know like very create crea- i i'm ex- feel like extremely creative at this this moment and this this couple of years so we just thought that why don't we just continue together to uh, create more music and he he's been um, composing music for movies 
way back and he has a lot of stuff by himself that he never released so basically Helsinki Vampire the album is like mo- movie music that was never released and I I came up with some ideas for the vocals and together we 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 made it how it is so it's it's like a it's very different record and, and it's it's not like every time most of the time you know like a guy from some band releases his own record he will say most likely like oh this is what i always wanted to do well i think the 69 cats my american dark rockabilly band was like the band and the record that i always wanted to do this is more just like uh this is what's going on right now and this is just uh you know like a this like a document from 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 last fall when we recorded this we we recorded during the fall like a, the darkest period of months here in Helsinki uh, from from September to December and that's that's extremely dark on these um, up up here in in the northern country oh, yeah. so uh, that was a perfect perfect you know like a time to create something like this and and it's like um, the the you heard and and, and People who know know about this record most likely have seen a couple of videos we did from 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 the album. But those songs uh, they represent total the other extreme. They're mm-hmm. like, uh, well, they are suitable for videos, suitable to play it at the clubs and 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 so on. But but the the rest of the record is extremely dark. It's like yes. a nearly nearly I would say depressing because <laughs> recording it it's it's kind of like. It's kind of like a, uh, interesting that when you do dark and very dep- like serious, this is this is in that sense that serious record. You know, the Six and mm-hmm. is never serious. It's we're, we're never serious. It's like a like cartoon uh, goth glam Fun rock stuff, band. Yeah. So it's it's like a, yeah. So it's it's never serious. But this is like serious music. So it sounds funny, but making very serious and dark stuff that's like funny. But in the end, because you're, you're, the, the music really um, absorbs you and all the vibes and so on. So it's, it's actually yeah. far from fun. It, it was like depressing at the moment. So, you know, like oh, when wow. we finished recording some song, there has to be a couple of days break without seeing each other or recording because, you know, like it leaves kind of like a kind of weird uh, like depression uh, after, after recording some of these songs. So you, it's, it's very real, yeah. dark. I noticed that the serious? sound is a lot different from the 69 Eyes. Like, because the 69 Eyes, it's like upbeat, fun, goth, pop rock type of thing. But with this, I felt like it kind of had more of like a dark wave, 80s, kind of goth electronica vibe. Kind of like, I don't know, I could hear kind of some Bauhaus in there, especially on the track. Um, I think it's like Birthday. It, it totally got like kind of a Bauhaus vibe. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I, I really take that as a, as a complimentary and uh, the the, the uh, compliment. And then then you know like um, um, there's there's as as much keyboards as ever possible because mm-hmm. you know like uh, Johnny Lee Michaels is the keyboard you know like wizard with 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 different kind of sounds and they're sort of limited every time he's been working with the 16 on ice because 16 on ice is a guitar rock band you know we have mm-hmm. two guitars and, and and loud drums and 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 loud bass so it's it's more we're basically somehow like uh, mentally we are more closer to the ramones you know than than any of the 80s dark wave bands but this is definitely something that that um, closer and especially it's it's not retro but strangely i don't know what it is but uh too hip no i definitely i think it's a cool album and i like the direction with it and it's definitely a lot different than your 69 stuff i think it's like more of a fresh sound but at the same time i don't think that you're alienating your 69 eyes fan base it's definitely still got that dark goth theme that people like so I, I think it's like a cool thing and i think that your fan base will definitely respond to it well um you mentioned bloodlust which i wanted to ask you about um that's the first single i think off of it and if it's not the first single i'm sorry but um you have a really cool music video that you released last month that features lemmy Kilmister from motorhead and porn star ron jeremy and a slew of other people yeah that was um that was like uh, the ultimate thing i mean obviously we just did like i said it was a uh, uh, you know, dark and stormy night here in Helsinki, and we were creating this desperate, dark 
music and for some songs we added some dance nearly danceable beats there and then you know the album was born and then you know like um, then it's done and 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 uh, my record company Cleopatra Records the legendary gothic label from from uh, from LA they um, they have started to um, uh, being involved with the movie business these days as well. So they are releasing uh, uh, occasionally some like up and coming cool horror movies, and uh, they that they were just thrilled for this. So say that's they they thought that hey hey let's have your music in the movies, and that was obviously something that I've been like dreaming, trying to tell in every interview ever I've done like hey I hope like, well, that one fine day the music I've been involved with will be in the movies and it has never happened until now so um, that was fantastic for a start as a start point and then uh, the, the the first single uh, is, was actually a song called Last Halloween which is like like nearly a children's music it's really simple we just want I, I said to Johnny like hey by the way Guess what? The Six and Nine Eyes never, uh, you know, wrote any songs about Halloween. Why don't we do it right now? You know, that's still left there that we haven't used. So I gave him instructions. Like he said, like okay, maybe. And then I said, like hey, let's do this. Let, let include the term Halloween, and I want there the songs to start with my birthday, which is October 15. So, and I said like, Hey, let's start, have those elements in a song and let's, let's do it. This, I think this idea is cool. So actually next morning, uh, I got some message from Johnny, like, Hey, I was up all night and Hey, listen to the song I just did. So from that stand, he wrote this song last Halloween. And that was, and later on after we, uh, recorded it, uh, after it's done, he started to send me messages like, I'm sorry, I ruined your record. Sorry about this song, Last Halloween. It's the worst song I've ever written. I'm sorry <laughs> about that, that it's horrible. He he, it's, he actually even called me. He sent a few messages and then he called me and he was like very apologizing. And I said, like, it's cool. It's like it is an anthem for Halloween. Hopefully somebody will play it when Halloween comes at, the, at their dance party or home party or something. It's, it's perfect for that. It's simple, simple and anthemic enough. So obviously that song is picked up as the first single and Cleopatra uh, put it to, um, we made a music video for it. So it was like, uh, there, there's some, it, it's going to be on the movie called uh, uh, Halloween Pussy Trap Kill, Kill, Kill. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, interesting title, but it's it's a, it's a really cool movie. Uh, what I've seen by far, and the interesting part in that movie is that uh, there's a there's a guy, there's like a like an evil guy who is tormenting people, and and his voice is Dave Mustaine's voice, you know, oh, cool. from Mega, Megadeth. So you know, that was interesting, and they 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 inc they did a like little, little trailer of the movie with that song. So okay. Now to your question, which is like the second song or second um, like single cut mm -hmm. or video single from from the from the album. It's so from the album is uh, is uh, that Bloodlust, and then that is they made a little trailer of of another movie, and there there's a upcoming movie called Sunset Society, which tells a story about like a, like a real life rock and roll vampires who hang out well around Rainbow Bar and Grill and, and of course, Sunset Strip. And, uh, you know, that that's a movie w that they filmed a couple of years ago. And, and there is Lemmy. Lemmy, a, he's, he's like the main vampire of the film. Oh, cool. It's not like a, it's not like a small cameo. He's like the main the main vampire of the film. So this would have had to have been filmed in like 2014 or 2015 because Lemmy died so, yeah. in December 2015. Yeah. So... Um, that was filmed like yeah a couple of years ago, and then there's Tracy Guns from L.A. Guns, uh, Dizzy Reed from Guns and Roses, and and like you said, I guess your favorite, Ron Jeremy, and uh, <laughs> and that was uh, <laughs> that was like uh, so I heard about it and I was like wow that's cool like are you gonna can are, are you gonna make a video of it yeah let's have like a let's make a video and I think yeah let's have Lemmy there as a vampire and I was like wow this is like unbelievable and then. 
you know, we, we, we filmed the video also, the both videos are like my parts are filmed in, in, in Los Angeles as well. So, um, a couple of months ago. So, you know, then they cut it together and I think like, like, um, even though I'm there by myself, but I think the video is like one of the coolest music videos I've seen for a long time. Uh, it's strange. It's very strange to say, I don't like to look at, look at myself or listen to myself or anything where I'm involved, but I like that video a lot. I mean, it's, it has everything I could ever dream of, like, you know, like cool vampire vampires and, uh, like great movie scenes. And of course, Lemmy as a vampire and all these guys I just, you know, mentioned. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, yeah, I mean, a lot of, with this record, a lot of things are sort of happening that I always have been dreaming of all my life, uh, as, as a rocker. So, um, uh, you know, I, I couldn't be happier. And I think there is something still waiting behind the corner. I have, I have few, uh, few things, uh, that, that will be probably, uh, you know, like that, that will I tell in a couple of months as well, but most likely, um, uh, and obviously the feedback has been phenomenal from the album. I mean, uh, people have liked the singles and, uh, also they like, they have liked the whole album because it's very different from the 69 eyes. Like you said, it's a, like a serious record. So, and it's more like a, there's a little bit theater there. There's, it's more artistic there's a little ambient there there's a lot of different elements that that you know that have been um, that couldn't be couldn't exist on the on the 69 nice album so it's it's a nice little record and it's it already you know like uh made my life complete in many ways uh next step would be obvious obviously to uh uh which which i didn't because i didn't plan anything we just did the music and that's it mm -hmm. now it's really happening so uh uh, I guess I, I will play a couple of shows. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that album. if you're going to go on tour for this. Yeah, well, I, I don't know about tour if it's if it's uh, if, if if it's possible, but I mean, uh, I have to put up a little um, Helsinki Vampire band, uh, you know, to support it, and um, and and you know, some people have been already like asking, like, am I going to play the songs with the 69 Eyes? No, 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 of course, because it's a very different set up. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll put up, put up a little American uh, dark wave band, like, uh, very, like, uh, and that, that will be interesting. I already have a few uh, guys in my mind, and uh, we're just, uh, uh, as, as I said, I'll be back in, back in LA in a couple of days. So then I will, uh, then we'll probably have the first rehearsals or something. Are you planning to do more work with the 69 eyes or is it more like your solo stuff that you're focusing on right now? Well, actually, uh, I already recorded the, the new 69 eyes single like a month ago. Um, then that will be, uh, that, that comes out in the fall. It's uh, it's oh, actually wow. a Christmas, Christmas single. Okay. So like, like actually there's some logic, everything, what I do, like, like I said earlier, we never had any Halloween single, uh, Halloween song with the 69 eyes. So it, I wanted to, so I sort of like, okay, I'll do it by myself. So, but we, we ever had, we haven't had any, uh, Christmas songs either. So let, we'll do that with the 69 eyes. So we're going to have a, um, you know, like a real goth and roll Christmas song, um, you know, like, uh, coming out in, like in October, November. And then, you know, like, it's like now, now the time in the studio is just to, to say more sleigh bell, you know, it's just like, it's, it starts with the very, it, it's going to have like really loud sleigh bells. Are we going to get a I know Hanukkah, that's how about a Hanukkah song? <laughs> um, that is a good thing to ask. I'll have to <laughs> learn about a little bit more about that. <laughs> I got your oh. point, actually. <laughs> no. Thanks for reminding me. Don't forget about Hanukkah. But yeah, Christmas, yeah I, I you have to have I, a good I'm, Christmas I'm, I'm song. Probably, it seems like I'm culturally a little bit limited in this. But okay, thanks for that. I'll, I'll, I'll do it in, <laughs> maybe in my next solo. Uh, Just do like record. a goth version of the Dreidel song. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or have a Nagila like gothed out and like metal. <laughs> Be fun. Well, well there's, a, there's a lot of like uh, – 
cultural holly weekends uh, or occasions. So I, 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 I maybe I even do or every just do a holiday actually, album. That would, like, yeah. yeah, that would be like actually really beautiful. Yeah, that would be a really beautiful idea to have like uh, yeah. all actually, the what? religious, religious like uh, special events on the same record by the same artist that would be actually be like very a very unified. peaceful idea in the end get so them all in there yeah, you can have like a raw you can have a ramadan song a, a pres- song, yeah yeah exactly, Passover, exactly. christmas right. easter yeah. president's Kwanzaa, day Kwanzaa, yeah president's day i don't think anyone wants to celebrate <laughs> president's day right now <laughs> now over the years a lot of your songs have been about vampires and the occult is this an actual area of interest for you or are you more into horror movies uh, it was it was from the kid, the vampires, uh, it, no, and and of course over the years, you know the the what vampires mean have radically changed. Mm-hmm. You know when I was a, well, this takes a while this story, but when I was a kid, uh, I was like um, just before school. I I think I was like six years old or something, and those were the days in the seventies that. Um, Horror was very, very popular thing, you know, like um, uh, in American pop culture, you had like um, Marvel Comics has few, few, different, there was still like, you know, like these, uh, like Eerie and all, all these uh, classic horror magazines by by uh, Warren Publishing. Then and then there was like more Marvel Comics had like uh, uh, Werewolf on Prowl and and all these, um, all these different horror themed comics and then there was of course like uh, late night tv shows uh with, with horror so you know that that was also transferred uh, all the way to finland as well so there was a magazine which was combining stories from uh, different different horror magazines uh, but it was called uh werewolf uh is it werewolf on prowl or were- werewolf on night in american version i think it's on yeah. were- werewolf on prowl Yes, the Mar- Marvel Comics version. So that was like a, also like like a magazine here in Finland. You know, it means like it's uh, translated in Finnish. So I was six years old, and my mother brought me one issue, and I I still don't. I'm, I've been asking from her like how it's possible because I could have known, uh, could have not known about like. Uh, anything about those and i was a kid you know i was i was totally you know like into flintstones and different things <laughs> than that and then then you know she brought me one of those horror magazines and from there i there was of course like uh, jack russell is russell is the main guy in in uh, werewolf comics and uh, he turns out to be a werewolf every every full moon night and that's really exciting he's like nearly like a superhero so that was like fantastic and interesting and not that scary but there was one story that uh, that one girl gets buried uh, t- totally from different comics taken from totally different comics um, uh, to that magazine that, uh, that there was some girl buried uh, in, in a Victorian age and then she returns as a, as a vampire from the grave and, and, and the main characters had to shut him with the silver bullets and uh, that was like really I, I was scared about that really like oh that, even though I didn't read I didn't know what they were talking about the, but the pictures were really scary so there it all started and, and at some point uh, the horror scene died out but from um, Secondhand comic book stores. I could find some, uh, you know, old old horror magazines, and I was really interested in vampires. And at the at that moment, there was we're talking about now 70s. So there was only one book, which was Bram Stoker's Dracula, and that was that was translated like uh, by that time in Finnish. And then I was, I think, I, I was 12 years old when I when I finally read it. Because that was that was book, you know the books were in libraries, you know, they, they were in the two sections, uh, children well many sections but you know like uh, uh, children's books and, and adult books of course Dracula was Bram, Bram Stoker's adult. Dracula was like in uh, adults and so sort of like uh, it took like a little while for me to even find it and then, and then and discover about it and. Uh, you know, there was no information. You have to talk. I'm talking about years like, uh, like, like, like late '70s. So then I read it, and I, I get really scared about the book. I was actually like sort of uh, even thinking that the 
like, what if my fangs start to grow or something like that? <laughs> it really, really scared the shit out of me. And then there was no movies, of course, and not, no, and 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 no no videos. Yet. There wasn't even videos yet, you know. And then I was, of course, underaged. So how could I get in there? And uh, then, um, but I was I was excited about the whole thing and the whole subject and and and. Uh, then that find then it turns into the mid eighties and uh, then uh, there was this movie called uh, uh, Fright Night mm-hmm. and uh, it came out and then when you went to see it you there were even here in Finland you got like uh, they gave you in the movie theater uh, like a glow in the dark um, plastic fangs. And they, they, so it was like a set set coming along with the movie ticket, and it was it was the set was called Fright Night. It, it came along with the movie. I had them actually really really long unopened. Uh, I wish I still had them, but at some point I had to open them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm not a collector guy, but that would be fun to have, have still. So you know, I saw that movie, and that's the first movie which really introduces or any kind of a uh, uh, you know about vampires which introduces like a nearly a rock star kind of vampire mm-hmm. so like uh so it's, it's it was like it's still one of my favorite well it's it always i end it till 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 you know like always talk about vampires when when i'm doing interviews so I'm, I'm starting to say that that's my favorite vampire movie these days because it really impressed me a lot and then you know like um then of course uh after a couple of years came Lost Boys, yeah. And then we started the band nearly, uh, nearly, nearly half a year later or something. I have to remember the '69 Isis '80s band. So, you know, and the Lost Boys was a little, little setup for me because uh, let down for me because I, uh, I, I, well, I was like, like living. I was like my late teens, and I expected it to be like uh, scary and uh, more cooler. But it was like like a like early, like movie for early teenagers, and I was like, oh, this was like lame, you know. Then, but but and it, it disappointed me that it didn't have like cool music because at that moment when the movie came out, I mean, it has really cool music. But at the moment when the movie came out, there was like a Billy Idol, Metal Crew, Guns N' Roses, L.A. Guns. All these bands were like at their prime. So I was like, what the fuck? They have rock and roll vampires, but they don't have cool music. So from that idea, the 69 Eyes composed, uh, we wrote the song Lost Boys because I was like, it was kind of like revenge for the fact that they didn't have contemporary cool rock and roll in that movie. Obviously the movies, the, the, the music there is really great, but you know, I felt like there should have been more. So that's why like decade later, uh, low over a decade later, we uh, we wrote Lost Boys. Just you know, like just imagining, like what if 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 we were asked to write music for that movie. But going back to the vampires, so so Lost Boys came out, and we we started the '69 Eyes. And my I, my favorite band was the Cramps, and and some psych, like the psychobilly bands like Meteors, and and then goth bands like Alien Sex Fiend. You know, and all these bands have songs had songs about about vampires. Not to even mention like Bell Lugosi's is dead by uh, Bauhaus. So Bauhaus, yeah. you know, like I think the vampires were like in- interesting. There were like all my favorite bands were singing about them and had had movie posters in the, as their flyers and, and so on. So that's where I got the idea to use the same thing with 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 my new band and. Uh, when we had the uh, when we had the first seven inch single out we had like little i i made a little I'd ask a, a friend of mine was a comic artist like like better than i was i was drawing as well but i like what he was doing so he uh he drew a comic little comic story about like the like the as our band as vampires and that was like included with the first seven inch so it was like there ever since from the beginning that the vampire rock and roll you know in the way that nobody else was doing it later of course yes. uh, la guns had their album hollywood vampires 
and of course, decade later, I stole that uh, that to and, and which is still in use, like Helsinki Vampires, which which we started to use with the sixty nine eyes. That obviously came from Hollywood Vampires thing, you know, obviously. And now now Helsinki Vampire. Now now you can guess. Now it's like a. It's self-explanatory, but you know, like uh, the vampire scene has been following us ever since. And then I've been using it more or less. Also, voodoo has been in the songs always since the beginning. That's something what I uh, I ran into in New, like my New York '80s New York days. And and well, I, more more about the vampire thing. My more thing was like uh, when I started to hang out in New York, like in um, in in '88. Uh, uh, and uh, late late eighties in in the rock scene, uh, I have blue eyes and uh, I probably look a little bit different than the, like the rest of the guys are the, back then there maybe still today. So uh, like people start to come to tell me like, hey, you look like a vampire when I was like <laughs> at the rock clubs, and I was like uh, of course like extremely flattered, and I ha- I didn't ha- I actually I didn't exactly understand why why they thought about that but then sometime so, someone somebody said about you know my eyes and then you know like like just a couple of years before uh interview with the vampire the book came out that was like that's also like in the mid 80s and i haven't read it of course and You've then never you know, read like it? I'm, well then i hadn't i hadn't even heard oh, about okay. it until, until people heard. start to come to then you know like interview came out and then came less that and I was in the clubs in New York, and people come to talk about me of, of this book I should read. You know, I never heard about it, of course. And you know, like um, then I was obviously by then I was a horror movie fan. I was a subscriber of Fangoria magazine and all that. But you know, like um, some information hasn't uh, tr- reached me in Finland, so you know, I learned about these things. Uh, through people t- started to talk about me. Hey, you, you're, you look like Lestat, and I, had, I didn't have no idea what they are talking about. Later on, you know, through these decades, there's movies, everything, you know, like, uh, and then all, all of a sudden, um, uh, I, I returned. Because, you know, it's, it's fun to write like a gothic song uh, from the point of vampire or something related to it. That's the most easiest thing, you know, if you, mm-hmm. if you understand the whole concept in the right way, you know, so it's, it's, so the first songs that the Six and Nice ever wrote was like actually vampire songs. And even the first demo we ever recorded, the song was called Fright Night. And that's something what I'm now digging up. I, I think we should write the song, uh, you know, and make it ready finally for the next album. So that's, that's coming out. And uh, so it's been always there. And then, but I, I, I sort of got, it was it got boring of course it doesn't you know like i'm I'm getting older and it's not that interesting uh till the end of end of end of the world but then then you know like i i i guess i i was i wasn't that inspired when we did the album called back in blood so i thought that okay i i i forced myself to uh like wrote songs of like a lot of songs about uh, around the vampire theme. I really for literally forced myself, and I wasn't that seriously inspired. I just thought that I know how to do this. I've done this like couple of decades, so let's do this kind of record. And at the same time, we were recording it. Um, Twilight came out, so oh it was kind of like a like a funny thing because like now you heard the background, and then we have the album out, which is about like uh, by that time I was like fascinated about like. Uh, I'm, I was or inspired by Hunger, the movie, and also like um, uh, these uh, French, French vamp, like late '80s vampire movies. And then you know we have the record out, and everybody starts to talk about like uh, Twilight. Have you ever so seen Twilight? Was, yeah, of course. But I mean, it was kind of like a, it, it was the biggest teen ph- phenomenon at that moment. I don't think there's ever. After Harry Potter and Twilight, I don't know what's a is is has there been even that big big phenomenon after yeah. those two things. So, but that you know we're in the middle of like fucking Twilight, uh, <laughs> you know mania, and, and we're we're old guys are releasing a vampire record. So we sort of <laughs> felt like, or I felt like kind of stupid to talk about 
like every interview all about Twilight, what I think about it. So <laughs> that was, that was, for five seconds, I thought, oh, this is our moment. And then during the sixth second, I was like, oh, this is actually not our moment, like shit. But I mean, you know, like times change. And I, and then came, of course, True Blood. We used that as a, uh, I, I, I like to pick up the intro tape for the 69 Eyes, always something that, you know, shocks people or wakes them up or makes them curious or causes some reaction. So oh, they had like a, um, bad things, the song as a opening track uh, for, the, for the 69 Eyes shows for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And that, that was like, I think that was perfect. And of course the show was like fucking cool. Uh, yeah, I feel like by that's the end, it's like got a little bit watered, watered down. But I mean, let the bygones be guy, bygones. But you know, like there's been vampires been coming back and forward, you know, in in during the history of the sixty nine eyes. So you know, uh, that's a, that's about it. I mean, that, I, that's the answer. I mean, I can't answer it few sentences. I mean, I I don't I don't I don't I. I don't think there could be even any more cool books about vampires. I, I hope if there was one, I, I wish. I, I hope that some people will give, give it to me. But but you know, like uh, I think that the the big lines in one vampire literature is like Anne Rice, her let's say three first books, and then there was like uh, uh, Poppy Z Bright uh, from New Orleans. She wrote Lost Souls, which was like. Uh, amazing book of vampires and then there was of course nancy a collins writing uh, her sonia blue series couple of books but these came out already like in the late 80s early 90s uh then of course uh came these true blood books i don't i never read them but i uh I, i'm not looking forward to read any more books about vampires really yeah, I feel like you guys are kind of more like the Lestat, Queen of the Dam type of vibe than you are Twilight. That's for sure. Well, I mean, if you th- if you think of the movie Queen of the Vamp, uh, Queen of the Damned. So if mm-hmm. you think of the movie right now, that that's actually a fucking great movie with amazing music, really oh, yeah, really cool favorites. music, and everything's really cool. But when it came out, I was actually, for instance, pissed off because the main guy has same rings that I had like at <laughs> some point in the magazine. So obviously I think that, oh, they've been like spying me and using my image. You know, that was my wife. I wouldn't then, be but, surprised because when I, I never noticed you never about know. the rings, you never know. but I noticed, I, I always felt like, uh, like it kind of reminded me a little bit of Villa Vallo from him. Like I felt like but they might have based it exist. somewhat off of that. He, so it wouldn't surprise yeah, me he, if they looked at your band as well. Yeah, well, he, I think he didn't exactly exist then when they were doing that movie that much. But no, the uh, movie came out in two thousand one, and I think he yeah. had been okay, out. Okay, okay, he, he, okay, okay. Yeah, you <laughs> never know. No, but you never know. I mean, I'm just who like, knows? I, I, but I, I wouldn't like be surprised a, if they looked at like these bands that were kind of in the goth scene at the time to evoke the yeah, image. Yeah, and I was there. like probably bitter why I wasn't. They weren't didn't give me a call just for. Uh, anything but now i've done that as well i have this video of bloodlust so i'm totally satisfied so you know you yeah know, and plus justice, you have you have justice lemmy in your wins. video what's cooler than having <laughs> lemmy yeah you know ju- there's there is some justice after all even for a poor old helsinki vampire i guess in this world yeah and so now everybody can go check out your album helsinki vampire in stores now and hopefully you'll have some tour dates it'd be cool to hear this stuff live Maybe you can do yeah, like, like a I'm residency in like LA and New York or something. Yeah, yeah. It, at least those like tiny clubs. I love to play actually like a really tiny clubs. I uh, the sixty nine eyes. We just for instance uh, this summer we played in Germany at this huge. There's always these huge Gothic festivals. Can you imagine mm-hmm. like there's uh, like thirty thousand Goths, you know, coming oh, for man, one weekend crazy. for for these festivals and everybody's dressed up you know, the best they can, they prepare their costumes and clothes like all year. So that's like an amazing sight. So we just played uh, like at the, it, one of the festivals in, in Leipzig, is in Leipzig and it's called the Babe Gothic Treffen. So we just shared the stage there. Uh, there was 6,000 people. We played uh, uh, with, with the Mission UK and, and Skinny Puppy. So, you know, those, those big shows are, 
are exciting in many ways, but strangely, I love to be closer to the people. I like to play in a small club in front of your eyes and in, in, in just in, 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 in the reach of your touch. Yeah. So, you know. I saw you guys play 10 years ago at the Marquee Theater in Tempe, Arizona, and that's about a thousand seat venue. And I think it was um, the, the headliner was Cradle of Filth, who I didn't even bother to stay for, but you guys were really, really, really amazing. I remember oh, my friend you. was like, oh, they're so yeah, cool. That, that, was, that was probably the, that was the coolest tour I ever done. And uh, that was just because uh, I was friends with the Cradle of Filth guys, and we've talked about it over the years, like really long time. And, uh, you know, like, uh, we used to have like drinking contests whenever we meet here in Finland. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I was carried away. Sometimes they were carried away. And, uh, then, you know, the, the tour really happened and that was like amazing, amazing time, amazing six weeks all around Northern America. And that was, those are the, those are the best times, uh, with the 69 eyes ever, I think by far. Well, hopefully you guys play or you play some shows this year. And I look forward to hearing this Christmas song. I think we totally definitely need a vampire Christmas song out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, 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 so it's like, it's like it written for your us. show, really. I mean, you will be so amazed. We'll play You'll have it. to send it over to us to play on Adobe when it comes out. Yeah. We'll have to cool. Sort of like our Christmas Thanks. rotation. Thank you. So um, we just talked to Yerky from the 69 Eyes and um, his new solo album, Helsinki Vampire, is out now. Here's a song off of his Helsinki Vampire solo album called Sayonara.